Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at Stir It Up by Bob Marley. Um, really basic tune, cool little riff. Um, you know, it's simple, but it works, sounds great. Um, so this is all about syncopated strumming, which is often featured in reggae style. Uh, syncopated just means emphasizing the upbeat. So what we have on every single beat is a down up strum starting on the upbeat or the and. So if we break a single beat into four divisions, which would be 16th notes, one E and a, we don't strum anything on one E and then we strum down up on and a. So that would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So that's how you get that down and then you start to speed it up. Now when you're playing it alone uh, with nothing else, not with a recording or a metronome, uh, it'll be easy to fool yourself into thinking that that's the downbeat. So you wanna make sure that you're emphasizing the upbeat mentally as well as um, you know, not just telling yourself that you're playing that and then letting your mind kind of wander as you're playing. Really important to hang on to that um, because it is difficult to feel if everybody else is emphasizing the downbeat. Um, you have to be playing, you know, opposite to them or contrasting what they're doing, which sounds great, but uh, just, you know, that, that mental focus um, is what you're really working on here. So I recommend playing with the recording, slowing it down if you have to, playing with a metronome, counting out loud, just knowing exactly what's going on. So when you speed that up, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So on and so forth. So another important thing is muting um, right after the strum. So you have just using the heel of my hand. You don't have to be uh, rough with the guitar or anything. You, you know, a light touch is going to mute the strings. Um, and we also want to make sure that we're warding off any tension um, anywhere in our body, but definitely in the right hand. We don't want to be slapping the strings and then making it difficult for ourselves to get back into the strum pattern because we have to do that over and over and over again. Um, so that that's what the strum pattern is all about. We'll come back to that in a second, and I'll show you those other chords that I was playing. Um, the riff is open five, open five again, and then the fourth fret of the fifth string, and then that again to the open four string, open four string again, back to string five fret four, again, and then this is four open, string four fret four, string three fret two, and then open four, String four fret two, string three fret one, string two open. So so a little position shift in there that you want to work in. But again, that's two open A's or open string five and then two string five fret four, and then two open string four, back to string five fret four twice, and then open four, string four fret four, string three fret two, open four, string four fret two, string three fret one, and open string two. All right, and real quick, let's go over these other little shapes. So. Um, what makes this, you know, a lot more enjoyable is you can use, you can learn these triads that I was uh, playing with, and then start to improvise around it. So the first time, I just played standard A major, standard D major, and standard E major, all open chords. And the second time, I played A major, D major, and then I shifted that pattern that D shape up two frets. So that's an E chord as well. Standard A, standard D, slide your D chord up two frets, and only strum strings three, two, and one there. The next set is string three fret six, and then I'm barring strings one and two at the fifth fret. That's A. For you guys that are familiar with 
bar chords straight out of that right there. And these are often used in this, you know, reggae, ska uh, type strumming. Um, so six, five, five, fretwise there. And then your D is string three fret seven, string two fret seven, and string one fret five. And I'm using fingers three, four, and one. And then slide that up two frets, and you've got your E. So A, D, E. And then the last group was back to the D shape. I'm at the ninth fret here, but I'm just using the same D chord shape, only strumming strings three, two, and one. So I'm on fret nine on string three, fret 10 on string two, and fret nine on string one. And then I'm gonna use this shape that I use back here for A, but I'm gonna use it at the 10th fret. So I've got 11, 10, 10. That's my new D. And then slide that up two frets, and you've got E. So let's review those real quick. Standard A, standard D, standard E. Standard A, standard D, shift up two frets. A at the fifth fret, this is six, five, five. D is seven, seven, five. Slide it up two frets, nine, nine, seven for E. And then back to the D shape here, frets nine, 10, and nine for A. And then bar, little partial bar here, 11, 10, 10 for D. Slide that up two frets, 13, 12, 12, for E, and then you can start to improvise with that a little bit. So you get the idea, but make sure that you have those shapes in your fingers and you feel comfortable with them before you start trying to bounce around. Um, and if possible, relate it to something that you're already familiar with if you've learned some bar chords or some other triads. Um, but that's it, it's a, it's a great one to have fun with. Good little, um, great strum pattern for the right hand and you know, make sure that you're getting the muting in there. You don't want it to be just ringing out all over the place. Uh, so anyways, have fun, let me know if you have any questions guys. See you in the next video, thanks a lot.